Okay, we're doing another matchup here, mashup here software, and you notice here I've got smooth board up. That's going to do my pen. Um, I've got geometer sketch pad, and I am recording with Camtasia Studio. I will do this the next time with Cam Studio, which is actually a, a downloadable shareware from the same company, Camtasia, in Livonia, Michigan. So we're going to hope. What, I'm, what I've got here is I've also finally have a pen, a bamboo pen. Um, and we're experimenting with this. It is a human interface device. It is a kind of a pen, more or less a digitizer. Um, and digitizers have been a part of engineering for quite a long time. They come, they go, they come back. Um, and this product, as you're seeing, it's basically tablet computing without the tablet. Um, and it's a little bit sporadic here, so bear with me. You notice that I still have yet to pay for the smoothboard.net, so they're going to keep telling me that, and I'm going to work around this. I've got Geometer Sketchpad, and what you'll realize is anytime you see the cursor there, I've got um, the smoothboard software. I'm going to try to bring this one up. It's going a little slow here. Am I? So I'm having that set on navigation. As soon as I change that to annotation, I will actually be drafting like with a black pen here. I grab that and turn that on now. It should actually be drafting with a black pen. But you'll notice there the smoothing is not really good or I've got something set wrong where it's kind of a little bit hokey. You're going to see PowerPoint's interface uh, using this is a little bit smoother. So that said, when I do that, when I'm in annotation mode, I am just more or less writing on a, a screen on top. And you can start to see this. Um, iMac kind of slowing down with all this going on, so that's not a good indicator. But all right, so here's what we've got. Um, let me just kind of go through the, the, the basics of maybe you, you don't want to use the tools in a program like Sketchpad, but you might want to go ahead and draw um, a function. Function could be something like a the deformed shape of a beam. So now I'm going to see here with pen here. Go across here, and that beam maybe dips down, comes back through and comes back down like that. Now the reason why it might have done that could have been, change the color of the pen here, could have been in fact that it had supports here and here, here a pin joint and here a roller joint and it had on it a series of loads <clears throat> either distributed, sorry that's not working so good, series of loads either distributed or uh, point loads which caused this deflection. And it actually causes deflection by causing shear which causes bending which causes a deflection angle which causes deflection. And if you start structures with the sense that you should be able to very often guess at one, one particular force or any set of forces do, does to the shape, you will eventually have one of the three points in your triangulation in the fact that if in fact from, change the color of the pen, if in fact from here to here it is concave down, in other words, the perpendiculars are divergent going up. If it is concave down, then you know it has a negative moment, internal moment or couple. And we'll talk about what that means, especially if we can figure out how this thing works. Not too happy about how this is picking up on my pen. So if from here to here, students, it's shaped concave down, it has a negative moment, and from here to here, it has a positive moment, internal moment, and from here to here it has a negative internal moment. And the only reason you know that is because you can guess at the shape at this point. Eventually it's a mathematical proposition, a negative moment. So it, we'll see many, many definitions and many, many conventions, and of course I immediately screwed up by not starting with putting down my coordinate system immediately. All right, and with the x, with the y, which means you have an assumed z, you have a positive theta, positive angle there, 
And in the end, in the end, you also want to do things like um, think about time equals zero, and you know. Those are, so you get the habit of getting towards more complex problems. What is the time, time stamp? Time is now. This is not working so good. Pressure, all those other datum things that you would think about. But for the most part, you have to just deal with what your datum is. And this time, we're going to be using x and y because we've assumed that we're kind of doing a 2D problem. Very often, we might do the same 2D problem by making this x and z, which would mean y is into the board going into the board so you have to kind of put your convention there but what we want to see and mostly what I'm demonstrating again here is just this and experimenting with the software um, and it's not so good so smooth you can realize that what's why uh, uh, engineering digitizers have a, a lot more density and there's one around um, campus that I've carried around for like 20 years it still works except for now we don't have a USB or we don't have a RS-232 port in the back of our computers but um, a lot of different products and, and I'm sure we can work some of this out but what we've got here is a realization that um, we should be able to it, once we do a basic sketch showing the supports and replacing them eventually with reactions so I'm going to try to show you what that looks like um, I don't have room because they've been able to kind of sketch it down here Here's what this the next step in the standard process would be. We would have started with a beam. Try this again. Start with a beam going across. And that beam would have been subjected to a load here, a load here, and a load here. And it had supports here and here, but you would replace those supports with the requisite number of unknowns. And what we're going to see, even though Visually, we might see a difference in a book. We're going to get used to using colors. Colors. I colored pencils, and so we can actually show the reactions, so that the reaction points emanate from the point of application. So the reaction here, and the reaction here. All right. This is this reaction, and it's got. It's a reaction, so it has a single hatch. And this is this reaction here. It has a single hatch. And these are single point loads, or concentrated loads, and so they do not have any hatches. And if, in fact, in this problem up here, we had had some sort of distributed load, right? I'm going to show that. Typically, it's going to be showing with some sort of hatch or so many, so such distributed load, in other words, so many pounds or kips per foot, then we would replace that down here with a double hatch. And this nomenclature, you've been exposed to it for quite a while with me. Um, realistically, you'll be doing a lot of this on paper, quick sketches so that you can then use the software or your calculator to make the, the solve it. Um, to solve the solution. But what you really want to start with, as always, is a good sketch and then a free body diagram. And as a side calculation, we're going to call this, you want to sketch out, even before we cover it in class, what you think the shape of the structure will deform under the load. You want to think of what you think will be the deformed shape of the structure underneath the load. So let's see if we can kind of, so we can Put an eraser. I'm going to erase all, and I'm going to try to now go into the Sketchpad, and let's just see if I can put in a function that looks like that. So I'm going to go from annotation to navigation, and on Sketchpad, I'm going to go ahead and put in a new function, and that function, this thing's not going to move for me. We'll talk about what the function is, but the deflected shapes are very often a function that looks, it's a fourth order equation. So in this case, we know that we're going to make it x to the fourth minus 3x to the third. I have no idea what this is going to look like, plus 3 x squared minus x 
plus 7. And that is the form that a deflection equation takes. I'm going to hit OK, and then generally hit graph plot function. And I have no idea where it went. So, but it will, in fact, graph that function. Thanks for listening.